Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use GitHub to post a blog or product documentation directly to the web with the Pages option. I'll be demonstrating this by using Typora to convert a Markdown file to HTML and then push it up to the GitHub repository for Pages. If you like this video, please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. Be sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring the bell to get notified of new videos. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. At some point in your career, you'll want to establish a presence on the internet by posting a blog or sharing product documentation so others can view it. Using GitHub Pages to host your websites for both you and your projects is a really great solution. You can add documentation to any repository that you have on GitHub. What you'll need to do is to add HTML files directly to the root of one of your branches of your repo, or put them all in a folder called docs in one of your branches. GitHub Pages is available for public repositories with GitHub Free. If you have a pro version of GitHub, you can publish pages from a private repository as well. This means that you can, if you like, with a pro account, create a private repository where you may have source code related to a project that you don't want to make available, but can contain documentation regarding the project contained within the repo to be made publicly available. So you need to have a GitHub repository for your content. Now, if you already have a GitHub repository and you've cloned a local version of your repo to your computer, you can skip this step. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be creating a simple repository with a readme file that I'll edit using Typora and let Typora generate the HTML files for me. And I'll commit and push them back to this repo for GitHub pages. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new repository. And I'll give it a name. I'll provide a simple description. And since I have a pro account, I can make this repo private. Otherwise, if you want to publish, it has to be public. And I'll allow GitHub to create a readme file. And that's what I'll use for editing. If you're following along with this example, then you'll have to clone your repo to your local computer. And if you tap on the code drop-down menu on your repo, you have three different options to clone your site locally. For the third option, you have the ability to use the GitHub's official GitHub CLI, but it means that you'll have to download and install it on your computer before you do that. And I've already done that on my M1 Mac Mini using the Homebrew option. So now that I have it installed, I can go back to the repository that I just created and I'll copy that GitHub CLI code directly from this code menu. I can now return to my computer and open the terminal application on my Mac, and I can CD to the desktop or any other location where I want to clone that repository. And once you're at that desired location, you can paste in that command and hit enter. Now I get a warning that I need to first run gh auth login because I'm not already logged in to my GitHub account. So let me do that. And when I do, I'm presented with a number of options. Well, I want to log in through github.com and I'll use HTTPS. I can choose to authenticate with Git using my GitHub credentials, so I'll answer yes. Now here I can either authenticate with a browser or I can paste in a personal access authorization token. Well, I keep my access token for this computer readily available as I need it for my Xcode connection. So let me just paste that in here. And this logs me into the account. Now that I'm logged in, I can issue that clone command again. And it brings down all of those resources from that repository to my local repository. With the repository now locally on your computer, you can create your documentation any way that you like to do that. And it has to be HTML. Well, I like to use Typora, which is a great markdown editor. And it has a great feature that'll convert markdown documents to HTML. 
I've created a video on this that'll demonstrate the full feature set, so I'll leave it up to you to watch that video if you're interested. It is now a paid application, but I'm happy to pay the price because I've not found anything that is as simple and as intuitive to use for generating Markdown, and I use it for creating all my README files for all of my repositories and for doing things like scripting this video. I'll leave a link in the notes below. Now, to make it easier to include images in documentation, I recommend that you choose Typora Preferences. And on the Images tab, allow it to copy and paste images to a folder called Images that's relative to the current folder. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to use this README file here to create the script that I use for creating this video. So here's the beginning of that script. It's just simple markdown. I have an image on my clipboard that I'm just going to paste directly into the document. And the images folder gets created automatically when I paste that first image in here. You can see if I return to the finder, that directory is now there. So let me add the remainder of the markdown. And you can see that Typora and Markdown is very powerful, allowing you to use all sorts of styling, including code blocks. Well, the default theme for Typora that I use is the GitHub theme. So my README file is compatible with how GitHub will display the README at the root of my repository. You can, however, choose a different theme because we're just going to convert this code to HTML. So from the themes menu, let me choose Night. Now there are many themes available to you and you can visit the Typora website to browse and download from a wide selection. When you're happy with the documentation, you can save it as HTML. So in Typora, choose File, Export, HTML. But instead of calling it readme.html, I'm going to call it index.html, and that'll serve as the main page for my documentation or blog. Now, if I just open that index.html file locally using my browser, it looks pretty good. The images are embedded and it's great HTML with that theme that I chose. Now, once you've done your export to HTML, you'll need to update your remote repository. And this can be done on the command line in three or four steps. First, make sure that you change the directory to the repo folder, which in my case is the GitHub pages. And it's relative to the desktop where I already am. Well, I have to update my local repository, so I've added some files. So I'm going to use the git add period command to add the files before committing. And then I have to commit to my local repository using the commit command with a comment or message dash m just converted readme to HTML or whatever you want. And then now that it's updated and committed locally, I can push that back to GitHub using the GitHub push dash u origin main, because I'm on the main branch. With your HTML files now on GitHub, you can return to there. And if it's not showing the updated pages, you'd have to refresh. And we're going to enable the pages option. So click on the Settings menu, and then on the sidebar on the left, click on Pages. Next, you'll need to select a source for your HTML pages. Well, you can select the branch. Well, we only have one branch, so it's main, so we'll have to choose it. We'll select a subdirectory of the branch. Well, there are two choices. I can either choose the root, which is where we have it, or we could have created a directory called docs on the root of that branch and stored the HTML files within that directory. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And click on Save. This then reveals the link to your web page. And if I click on that, it opens directly in the browser using the URL that it had specified. Now, it may take a very short time before that page is live, so you might have to refresh until it's actually published but it won't be long before it's available. Now I've done this with several of my projects. 
Here's one that I've done for a Swift package of mine. This project has two branches, and the main branch is for the Swift package, but I created a second branch called Docs that is just the documentation on how to implement the package that I want to present on the web. And you can see on the Pages tab that I've chosen to publish from that branch and from the root. Here's an example of the documentation that I maintain for Jordi Bruin's wonderful bakery app. It's all on the main or the master branch. And as another example, here's one old blog post of mine where I'm questioning whether or not I can call myself a software developer. It's a private repository because I have a pro account, so no one can see my source files, but the branch where I publish the blog is always going to be public. So I have both the readme and the HTML files there in a docs directory, and I'm going to be publishing from that docs directory. Well, I hope this short video has been helpful to you to show you how you can use GitHub and the Pages option to host and publish your own web content. Thanks for watching.